What's up, guys? This video coming out a little bit late, but better late than never, as they say. This one will be on API security, right? A lot of you guys are probably familiar already with the OWASP top 10, but if you didn't know, now you know there's also an OWASP uh, API security top 10, which, as the name would imply, lists the uh, top 10 vulnerabilities that they uh, have categorized here uh, when it comes to API security. Now, this video is going to be very kind of foundational. We're not going to be getting too hands-on in this video or at all. Um, but if you are interested in this stuff, stay tuned to this channel. I will be this week starting on creating my own API lab and intentionally making it vulnerable and exploiting it and all of that stuff. We'll make a series out of that because there's definitely demand for that. Uh, thanks to you guys in the comments. Uh, once again, off top, gone. Had to shout this guy out once again. He's always given me uh, very good suggestions for videos on the channel. So definitely shout out to him. And you guys, You know, if you guys have any suggestions as well, feel free to drop them in the comments of pretty much any video. Uh, I try to check all the comments and, and get back to you guys. And a lot of times I've gotten really great video ideas from you guys. So you're very much a part of this as well um, if you're watching out there. So let's just get right into it. Uh, broken object level authorization is what they list first. Now, this is accurate of t as of 2019. Now, I don't know that this is in any particular order. Um, I'm going to kind of assume it's not because they're not numbered. They just have them as bullet points. So we'll assume these are all kind of around the same um, frequency here and severity. But uh, let's see here. Broken object level authorization. So M APIs tend to expose endpoints that handle object identifiers, creating a wide attack surface level access control. So object level authorization checks should be considered in every function that accesses data source using input from the user. So this is something that I haven't really uh, explored myself, like in my own pen testing. Um, it's not even something I'd probably think to look at I mean, we might want to dive more into this. And um, I mean, certainly I'm going to try to reproduce as many of these vulnerabilities as I can when I go to create my own API and then exploit it. Let me just get rid of this here. It's kind of annoying. Um, so yeah, this is definitely something that I'm not too familiar with. I'd have to look more into it. But this one I'm definitely familiar with here, broken user authentication. So, yeah, a lot of times you'll see that the authorization mechanisms, while they're there, they're not actually being implemented correctly. Um, so, you know, obviously tokens are pretty much the uh, most common way that you're going to see the authentication um, work here. So, obviously, if, if you can grab the token, if there's any failure with the authentication mechanisms, uh, maybe to do it securely or anything like that. If they allow plain text um, viewing of the authentication token or as an attacker, maybe there is some client side vulnerability that you're able to exploit on the web app, like um, say like a course vulnerability, cross-site scripting, um, CSRF, anything like that. A lot of times you'll be able to get the API tokens that way. Um, but in this case, they're not really talking about that. They're more so talking about, um, the actual user authentication being broken. So maybe the way that it handles the authentication is not keeping that, um, the cookie confidential or the, uh, the token confidential, right? So if you can exploit implementation flaws, um, and then like, obviously if you can get anyone's token, then you can impersonate them, right? So this is something I am very familiar with, but uh, as far as actually creating my own API and replicating that, that will be a bit of a challenge. That'll be interesting to uh, to do that part. Uh, excessive data exposure. This one is uh, pretty straightforward here. Basically, um, the API is exposing things that it shouldn't be. So you see this a lot, I believe, in mobile apps is because sometimes like a you know, all of mobile apps are working uh, off of APIs on the uh, on the back end. So they're making requests to these APIs, getting data, 
And a lot of times they're getting all the data, but only using a small subset of the data. And some of the data they get and they're not using is actually uh, pretty sensitive. So if you proxy your traffic with something like Burp while you're using the app, you can uh, see all the data they're getting back, right? You can see like the exact API request they're making. And yes, yeah, sometimes you can get some pretty sensitive data exposed that way, excessive data exposure. Obviously, in some cases, like if you are trying to figure out what parameters you need to pass into the API and uh, you don't have access or the level of access you should, and it's giving you verbose error messages that are helping you along the way, um, then you can figure out how to form a well-formed request. Um, so there are things like that as well that I guess you could categorize as excessive data exposure. Um, yeah, you want to turn off debug, obviously, after you're done um, developing when you have your production application, right? Uh, so then lack of resources and rate limiting. So yeah, this is like a denial of service type of thing. Uh, APIs, you want to rate limit the clients because if you have someone hammering your server, like I'm talking like really hard, um, especially depending on how much resources you have on your server, someone could definitely either degrade the performance or outright bring it down. So you want to have some kind of restrictions on the size or number of resources that can be requested by the client. Yep. And then, yep, they do mention uh, denial of service here. But also open to authentication flaws such as brute forcing. Yeah, that's true too. Maybe they're trying to brute force a valid token. And uh, if there is no kind of um, limiter on that, then it's going to be a lot easier for them to run their brute force attacks than if you did impose some kind of limit on that. And uh, broken function level authorization. So let's see what this means. There's a lot of buzzwords here. <clears throat> so it says complex access control policies with different hierarchies, groups, and roles under an unclear separation between administrator and regular functions. Yeah. So yeah, this is actually a, a pretty good point as well. Sometimes you'll see that uh, you'll have access to certain functions as a user that you probably shouldn't. And <clears throat> sometimes through that, you can end up basically elevating your privileges. Um, this one might be a little bit abstract, difficult to, uh, well, maybe it wouldn't be that difficult to demo, right? We can just create something that looks like it should be only available to an administrator, but we'll make it available to users as well. And that's one way that we could um, demo this type of vulnerability and exploiting it. But uh, yeah, I do see this a lot in the, uh, in the everyday real world testing that I do is that a lot of times these administrative functions will be accessible to accounts that it probably sh they shouldn't be, right? And that can lead to some pretty weird stuff, as we'll see. Uh, mass assignment, this is one that I would deal a lot with, with Java code especially. But uh, yeah, binding client provided data, JSON to data models without proper properties, filtering based on allow list, usually it's a mass assignment. So yeah, mass assignment. So think of it like this. There might be a number of parameters you have and they're all bound to the request, even if you're not using them. The reason you see that a lot in Java is I believe the default way that things are binded in Java is it binds everything. So everything that, uh, like all the parameters, if you could imagine, um, regardless of whether you're using those parameters in the request or not. And so what that means is as an attacker, if you have knowledge of these, what these other variables are, these other parameters, sometimes you can, uh, you can actually, uh, call on those parameters and, you know, for example, right. I know I'm speaking very abstractly, right? Let's say there's a parameter called admin. It's like a Boolean true or false is, is admin is a variable is admin and that's either true or false. Well, even though you might not be using that variable in your particular request, um, if the attacker knows that this is a parameter and they try a mass assignment exploit to see like, okay, let's see if I can actually, uh, use that variable, even though it's not a part of this request. If it, if it's binded, if it's mass assigned, then the, the, uh, attacker might be able to pass in is admin equals true. 
And now the server thinks they're an administrator and they can now run administrator commands with that. So that's one such example that can lead to privilege escalation. This vulnerability can be quite serious. And uh, yeah, it definitely is something that exists in APIs. So it's something you need to check for. And if you're a developer, it's something you need to uh, protect against for sure. Uh, security misconfiguration. This is pretty broad, but um, a number of things, right? They call out cores here. Verbose, uh, verbose error messages, sensitive information, unnecessary HTTP methods. Yeah, this can be a lot of stuff. Uh, a lot of what I'm going to be demoing is going to be centered around security misconfiguration, obviously. You can also lump some of these other ones in with uh, misconfiguration, right? Like excessive data exposure, for example. So yeah, this is a pretty, pretty broad one here, but very prevalent, no doubt. Uh, injection also pretty broad, but uh, yeah, if there's like a SQL injection, no SQL injection, command injection, any of that. I'm pretty sure everyone watching this uh, video knows of uh, injection vulnerabilities. So you can definitely have those uh, with APIs as well. And uh, improper assets management. This sounds pretty broad. Let's see what this is. APIs tend to expose more endpoints than traditional web apps, making proper and updated documentation highly important. Um, Proper hosts and deployed API versions inventory also play an important role to mitigate issues such as deprecate API version and expose debug endpoints. Yeah, so basically, you don't want to expose endpoints that uh, you don't want people hitting, right? <laughs> so especially if you have old API versions, uh, they're under a different endpoint, you want to, when you decommission them, you want to make sure you don't have them available still, right? Uh, sometimes... You, you know, developers leave things laying around and uh, that is a, a goldmine for attackers uh, for obvious reasons, right? So you want to make sure you're managing your assets properly. That's more of a general IT thing. You know, it's not even just limited to APIs, right? Websites as well, most certainly. Uh, servers, everything, right? Uh, insufficient logging and monitoring. This just means like they're not logging and monitoring the proper stuff, basically, right? You can pull off... Uh, attacks like brute force attacks and they're not logging it so they can't IP ban you. They don't know you're doing it or whatever, right? They're not logging and monitoring their their stuff. Pretty self-explanatory. So hopefully this was a good primer for you. I know this is getting kind of long, but uh, if you have any questions, drop them down below and uh, hit the subscribe like button as well. And I'll see you guys over in some more videos. I got them on the screen right now. I'll see you right over there. Thanks for watching.